Let's also appreciate and welcome Reverend Hillary. Yes. Elizoba Twakushaba. Even as we sing that song, just welcome the Holy Spirit. Just welcome the Holy Spirit. Welcome you Holy Spirit This is your hour This is your moment It's not about us It is about you So come and move in our midst Oh God Come and have your way Oh God Come and touch your children This evening Come set hearts on fire for you Come quench the thirst And satisfy the hungry souls This evening And draw us close to you That above all glory and honor shall come back to you. So Lord, take over. I disappear and I pray that you may appear. I decrease that you may increase that your children will see you and hear you speak to them this evening. We thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray and everyone says <coughs> Amen. Hallelujah. If you're happy to be in the presence of the Lord, come on, let's clap to Jesus. And make some joyful noise to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I bring you greetings from St. Francis Chapel, Makede University, where Jesus resides. <laughs> Hallelujah. Where is he? He's also here. Hallelujah. Amen. Indeed, he's also here. Praise the Lord. I'm so happy to be with you this day, and I know that God has a message for us. We shall dive into God's word, but I also have a brief testimony. I thank God that I'm alive, and I also thank God that I'm able to speak. Because this morning I woke up and I was unable to speak. Yes, my voice was completely gone, and yet I had to lead people in prayer at 5.30. It was a tough time. And for those who are online in the morning, I struggled all through, but hooray, I am here preaching the gospel. Hallelujah. <laughs> to God be the praise, glory, and honor. Dear friends, we are not of the breed that gives up, just like Hebrews tells us. We are a generation of men and women that are committed to take this nation for Jesus. Hallelujah. Is there someone who is determined this evening? Oh, I am so determined to see that my God, the one I worship, takes over because this earth is his. Hallelujah. Uganda belongs to God. And so that's why we destroy every spirit that has come as a result of Nyege Nyege. We destroy in Jesus' name. And we pray that Jesus will be exalted. So indeed, our friends online, this is an hour, an opportunity God has given to us. Let us dive in the theme that God has given to us. Praise the Lord. I want to thank our dear mama, the provost, for the opportunity you've granted me to come and bring God's word. And to my brother, Reverend Hillary, thank you and all of you, my brothers and sisters, for the great work that you do. Praise the Lord. I was asked to talk about the elements of consent. Consecration, the elements of consecration. We shall read a few scriptures here, but our reading comes from Acts chapter 6. But I'll ask us, we shall get there later. Brothers and sisters, this is an interesting topic. Such topics are rare in this day and age. And I want to thank God for the leadership team for such topics. Let's appreciate our leadership team. Thank you so much. Because it is rare these days, 
In many churches, what Christians want to hear are simply those topics that are saying, Echamagero, Chitwale, Mine, Visa. Ah! And then you see some Christians going to church and say, Open your bag. Let the money fall. Let it fall. No, it will not come like that. Hallelujah. <laughs> Pray, yes, we need to be women and men of faith, but we need indeed to allow the word of God to inform our prayer. So we thank God for such topics that are drawing us close to God, the elements of concentration. Dear brothers and sisters, allow me to bring it to our attention. I am sure we know that indeed in this fallen world, the biggest problem we have today, the biggest challenge the church is facing today and the world is facing today, the world at large, is the problem of separation from God. Separation from God. Brothers and sisters, separation from God means death. And so when we reflect on such a theme, we are simply saying that we want to be where God is. We want to be close to him. Brothers and sisters, God's presence is like oxygen. You can't see his presence but world changers cannot live without his presence. We don't see the oxygen, but reflect for a moment what happened in the days when COVID hit the world. Oxygen was extremely expensive, but now you and me are consuming for free, without reservation, without control. God has freely given to us. Come on, let's appreciate him for that. Yes. Remember those days, 2020, 2021, bad, 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 bad days and times. But here you are. Freely you have received, so use this oxygen to the glory of God. Use this oxygen to preach the gospel. So dear friends, we don't want to be among the men and women that have abandoned the right path of God. So when we talk about consecration, the elements of consecration, as I prayed... As I sought God, brothers and sisters, the image that came to my mind, I love to use images. I'm very visual, and I love to use my hands. I'm very creative. The image that came to my mind was the image of the shepherd and the sheep, vis-a-vis -vis the image of a cattle keeper and the cattle. What is the difference between the two? Think about the shepherd and the sheep. Please think with me. And then the cattle keeper and the cattle. Is there something different, the two? There's, of course, there's obvious similarities. The obvious one is they are both taking care of what? Animals. So what is the obvious difference? Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Let's appreciate him. The behaviors are different. But what is very obvious is that a shepherd goes before and the sheep follow. And likewise for the cattle keeper, what happens? The cattle, <laughs> and then the cattle keeper is behind. So as we talk about consecration, please think about that image because we want to emulate the good shepherd's example. The good shepherd's example. So what is consecration, dear friends? It is simply another word of being set apart. Being set apart. This evening, the Lord has sent me to talk to a generation of men and women that he is setting apart to be world changers. I've said here before that the future belongs to intercessors. Allow me to say that the future belongs to consecrated men and women of God. Men and women that are set apart dedicated to God, nothing else. Set apart from the things of this world and saying that as for me, myself and I, I will live for no one else but God alone. Living for no one else but God. Being washed 
from all the defilement of this world, being set apart, brothers and sisters, in that language, maybe the young people might understand today, consecration is simply like being in a class apart from the rest. Distinct from anything that contaminates us. Set apart, entirely devoted to God. Just like the sheep, no wonder we are referred to as the sheep of his, of his, sheep, of his pasture. We are referred to as the sheep of our God. He is the good shepherd. The good sheep follows the good shepherd. The sheep do not ask. The sheep does not ask where do I go. They simply follow the good shepherd. So this evening, the Lord is calling us as we reflect on the elements of consecration to be like the sheep, to simply follow the good shepherd. And do you know what he says in John 10? That my sheep know my voice and they hear when I speak. Help me ask your neighbor, when was the last time you heard the voice of God? Eh, when was the last time? What did he tell you this morning? What did he tell you? What is he asking you to do? Brothers and sisters, when we go to scriptures, both the Old Testament and the New Testament, let's flash Leviticus chapter 19. This is where this theme really originates, being holy and set apart. Leviticus chapter 19, verses 1 and 2. What does it say? We shall read it together. One, two, three. The Lord said to Moses, speak to the entire assembly of Israel. Hallelujah. Be holy. That's what I want us to pick out. Be holy because I, the Lord, I am holy. God told Moses that Moses was the mediator. Through Moses, he told him to go tell his people to set themselves apart. We are going to understand why. Why did God give such an, an instruction? So this evening, this God who is calling upon us to reflect upon our lives and review and check how, whether we are truly set apart, is asking us to reflect upon our lives. He told Moses, tell them to be set apart because I am holy. The same scripture is echoed in 1 Peter chapter 1. Verses 15 and 16. These are key texts in our discussion and reflection this evening. First Peter chapter 1, verse 15 and 16. Same, I will read. It's up there. One, two, three. But just as he... Hallelujah. Here, the disciple, the man who had followed and walked with Jesus, being instructed by the Holy Spirit, is now writing to the audience and saying, just like the one who called you is holy, be holy in all you do. In the Old Testament, we see the Lord sending Moses. Telling him, tell the children of Israel to set themselves apart. And then we see here in the New Testament, through the letter that Peter wrote, God is speaking through him and telling his audience, just like the one who called you is holy. In the past, he was saying, go tell them. But now here, he's bringing them close. He's personalizing this instruction. He's showing that now they are in a relationship with him. 
Brothers and sisters who are listening to God's word this evening, I'm here to tell you we cannot have consecration or holiness without a relationship. It starts with a relationship. And it says, be holy, be set apart in everything that you do. In everything. So God does not mix his words here. Both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, he is very clear. He stresses the aspect of holiness. He stresses the aspect of holiness. God, the one we love passionately, the one we have come to worship, the one who calls us by name, the one who has inscribed our names on his palm, he is saying that I desire holiness in heart and life. I desire holiness in heart and life. That is what he desires. Hallelujah. That's what he wants from you. So one wonders why. Friends, God's expectation is that you and me will be holy. Why? Why does God desire? Why? Why does he want us to be set apart? Why? Why is he asking us to be separate from the world? Brothers and sisters, we are living in the fallen world. We are in this world, but not of the world. Be separate. Be set apart because you are different. Hallelujah. Holiness is what he longs for. Holiness, being washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, being set apart for nothing else but him. I have resolved in my heart to know nothing else but Jesus Christ. I gave my life to the Lord many years ago, I think now about 36 years. I know some of you now are going to start calculating how old I am. Don't worry, I'm just with 16, hallelujah. 36 years plus. And let me tell you, I have resolved to walk with the Lord. I have resolved to do nothing but to live for God. So someone who is set apart is just like the sheep and the shepherd. Following in his footsteps. Of course, we fall short. But let me tell you, the Bible says a righteous person falls many times, but the Lord still picks them up. So do not remain in your mess. That is the challenge with many of us. When you fall short, we simply run away. God is calling us. God is calling us. But he's asking us to resolve. There are many temptations around us. There are many challenges around us. But God desires that we be holy because he is holy. Why? You know, our God is relational. Some of the communication attributes that we share with God is that you and me are relational. And especially us Ugandans, we are so relational. We love to interact. Not so. We love to call. And some of us, you're here, but you're thinking about that message you're supposed to respond to. You're here, but you're thinking about, okay, the single girls, you're thinking about that boyfriend. Or for those who are single gentlemen here, you're saying, I'm supposed to take that lady out. She likes this, she likes the other. We are relational beings, but we take that from God. Hallelujah. So if there is someone that has hurt you, please find it in your heart to forgive them. Our God is relational. So because he's relational, he desires to communicate with you. And he has put standards. He has put standards. We do not just come to God just far. In many churches around us, we are told you don't have to repent. Jesus paid for the sins once and for all. Are you serious? You go to that church, please run for your life. Because we are still in this body. We fall short. So God is asking us to be repentant sinners, to be repentant children of God. Hallelujah. 
if you ever go to the church and they're telling you, you don't repent, you are okay, your sins were paid for. Yes, he paid for the sins once and for all, but because we're in this fallen world, we fall short. So there is no shortcut. The secret to living a consecrated life is living a repentant life. Just like uh, it is um, Spurgeon that says, Spurgeon says that we need a broken life, a broken heart to be remorseful over the sins we have committed. But at the same time, we need a whole heart to worship and serve the Lord. Holiness, holiness is what you want. Holiness is what I need. Holiness, holiness is what you want from me. Let it be a prayer from me. heart even as we live it. Transform me. Give him your will. Take my will. Conform me. To yours, Lord. To yours. To yours. give him your heart this evening. Father, we give our hearts to you and we pray that you form our hearts, oh God. We give our minds to you this evening, given as we reflect on a consecrated life. The element of consecration, Lord, it starts with a relationship. And so we give our hearts this evening and we pray that you take our hearts, yes, change them and use them for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's clap to the Lord. Hallelujah. Our God is relational. And he desires intimacy. Consecration desire calls for intimacy. An intimate walk with the Lord. For those who are married, when you are with your spouse, it is an intimate moment. And it's in that process that a marriage is consummated. So the relationship that God desires from you and me is that intimate fellowship with him. Where you keep nothing to yourself. To the married men and married women here. If you're married to someone and you're not comfortable to even undress in their presence, you're married to the wrong person. Or, if you are married, I mean not married, but you go and undress before someone that you're not supposed to undress before, you know you are in the wrong place. The moment you, are, you undress before someone and you are ashamed, ask yourself. Is this the right place for me to be in? Is this the right person for me to relate with? So intimacy calls for openness. Living a consecrated life calls for openness. Calls for transparency. Calls for being free and yourself in the presence of God. So what God longs for, brothers and sisters, is that transparent walk and relationship with him. You remember in Genesis, the Bible tells us, in the cool of the day. What did God used to do? 
He would come and talk to his friends, Adam and Eve, until sin came in the picture. Again, God said that he has a friend in the name of Moses, that he would talk to Moses as a friend would speak to a friend. This evening, may you be a woman and a man that will freely talk to God. May you be a friend of Jesus Christ. You are no longer a servant, but a friend. If you have your friend at home, at work, and you're not free with them, you're hiding some things, they know that is not a good friend. So brothers and sisters, consecration calls for freedom in the presence of the Lord, being real. And that's why for me, I've resolved to hold no one in my heart. Mm -mm. I don't hold grudges. Hallelujah. I am not saying this that you come and offend me and try me. God might not permit you. Hallelujah. But I don't allow that to take space in my heart. I want to be free with the Lord. I want to speak to him freely. Because if you're holding someone you haven't forgiven, you're hurting yourself. So you need freedom. Forgive that person in Jesus' name. Set them free. I don't know who has hurt you. This is an opportunity to release that person. Actually, when you forgive the person who has snatched your husband from you, hallelujah, mm, you're helping yourself. Maybe there's someone who snatched your boyfriend and you're like, really? How could that guy leave me? You know, I thought you were walking down the aisle. He was not the right person for you. Hallelujah. Period. Good things are yet to come. Actually, the beautiful are not yet born. Praise the Lord. And at the right time, they will come. So do not hold a grudge because the man has left you. That's what I'm saying. Do not cry. You know, I work with young people, and many times the young people will come and say, Oh my goodness, this guy has left me. I am going to die. How can I live without him? <laughs> You die, we shall bury you, and your life will continue, and this guy will marry that girl. So if that guy has left you, he's not meant to be. He is not your standard. He is not your caliber. Hallelujah. The good one is yet to come. Praise the Lord. Or maybe you are so disappointed because you were asked, to your, your contract was terminated at work. Brothers and sisters, God works in mysterious ways. Maybe they have asked you to stop working. A big door is yet to be opened in Jesus' name. That was a ventilator. When he closes a ventilator, he opens a window. And may the window be opened in Jesus' name. When he closes a window, he opens a door. And maybe a door has been closed before you. Wait for the gate to be opened. Because it's going to be opened in Jesus' name. So don't quit on God because someone has terminated that relationship or that contract. You have a friend and he knows your name. Hallelujah. He knows my name. He knows my every thought. He sees each tear that falls and heals me away. I call. Hallelujah. The Lord calls you his friend. Please choose to be a friend of Jesus. I have resolved to be a friend of the Lord and I am not turning back. And life is fun in Jesus Christ. And I want to call upon you if you're for God, be for God. Don't leave one leg in the world and another leg. Let me tell you, he will spit you out. And when you live a double standard life, you are actually cheating yourself. You're missing out. Choose this day who you will serve. But as for me, I have resolved to serve no one else but King Jesus. King Jesus. And as we talk about consecrated life, a relationship and friendship that calls for transparency. Hallelujah. And again, God is asking us, why live a consecrated life? He desires that you become productive. 
He desires that you become productive. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5 to 9, you will read it when you go home. He's calling upon us to avoid being ineffective and unfruitful. When we live a yielded life, a surrendered life, everything we touch will bear fruit in Jesus' name. The Bible says in Psalm 1, Blessed is the man who does not sit in the seat of mockers, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor, nor walk in the path of mockers, but his delight is in the Lord. And again we are told, he is like a tree planted by streams of living water. May you be like that tree planted by streams of living water. And the verse continues to say, whatever he or she does prospers. May you see fruitfulness in Jesus' name. The Lord is ready to bless the works of the hands of his children. And so for us who have decided to know no one else but God, to serve the Lord, to stand for him, he is so dependable. He is so committed. By the way, he is a covenant God. The Lord never gives up. He never disappoints us. Yes, it might take long. I'm here to tell you, delay is not denial in Jesus' name. There is a delay, but that situation is not forever in Jesus' name. It shall certainly come to, a, a, to an end. So he desires when we live a yielded life, when we live a consecrated life, when we live a holy life, brothers and sisters, in fellowship, in intimacy conversation with God, I'm here to tell you that we become productive. Who doesn't want to hire a productive woman or man? Who does not want to have such a person? Because their focus is on pleasing God. But we also see God is asking us to live a consecrated life because that is a secret to maturity. Living a consecrated life is a secret to maturity. It takes consecration. Allowing yourself to surrender to the Lord. And let me tell you, that leads to growth. Because a consecrated soul depends on the word of God. Feeds on the word of God. Spends time in fellowship. A consecrated person does not have time for idle talk. A consecrated person does not have time for gossiping. Hallelujah. And if you don't spend time gossiping, you're going to be productive. I want to tell people that time it takes you to criticize a friend, the energy you invest in to talk about a friend, if you can only use that energy to do something constructive, Uganda will be a better place. May the Lord challenge us this evening to spend our time wisely. I want us to read Psalm 15. There is a wonderful example. Psalm 15. An example of a man who lived a consecrated life or who desired to live a consecrated life. And this is David. David longed to know nothing but God. He longed to spend time in the presence of God. May that anointing that was upon David rub onto you in Jesus' name. May that hunger, may that desperacy, may that desire be your portion this evening. Psalm 15, what does it say? Let us read it together. We are going to pick a few things from Psalm 15. One, two, three. Who despises but honors those who fear the Lord, who keeps his oath even when it hurts, who lends his money without usury and does not accept a bribe against the innocent. 
He who does these things will never be shaken. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and world without end. Amen. Hallelujah. Who can be in the presence of the Lord? This psalm is so deep. It is so rich. Who, what David was asking, who can live a holy life? Because it is only those who are holy that remain in the presence of God. Be holy because I am holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. And listen to the answer. He poses that question. Who may ascend your holy mountain? And he says a few things I picked out. One who walks blameless. One who walks and lives a righteous, past, a righteous life. One who speaks the truth. Hallelujah. I always ask a question. A half truth plus a half truth. Please turn to your neighbor and tell them the answer. A half truth plus a half truth is equal to? Hmm? A half truth plus a half truth is equal to? Some people are still thinking and what? <laughs> a half truth plus a half truth is equal to a lie. Sometimes we tend to say, ah, but you know, I just said a little truth. You know, it was like a little lie. Eh, 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 eh. That is a complete one. Hallelujah. So when you're before your boss the next day and he's asking you about a particular thing, please be real and open. Hallelujah. The Bible is telling us the one who may ascend the holy mountain of God is one who, who speaks the truth. May God anoint our lips to speak the truth in Jesus' name. And we are told that the one who promises and keeps their promise even when it hurts. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say, who is God speaking to? Do you have a debt you have not cleared? Such things take blessings away from us. Have you promised to wed someone and then you broke their heart? Have you put a ring on someone and then a ring on another and then a ring on another? Did you borrow money and did not pay? Please ask your neighbor, help me, help me. You know, sometimes we ignore these things, but you know, friends, the one who makes a promise and keeps it, though it costs him everything. Hallelujah. To the married men and women, in Ecclesiastes chapter 5, we are told, don't be in a rush to make a vow. And then you come and say, you know, it was a mistake. For us in church, there are many people that come to us and say, one day I was in office still serving at St. Luke's and a lady walked into my office and said, you know, Reverend, I want divorce. I was like, what's happening? I, I've been married one year, but I think I married the wrong man. I want divorce. Because you wedded us. I wasn't the one who wedded them. But I said, we were wedded in this church. And because we were wedded here, we want this church to divorce us. Ouch. So that's why for us, before we wed, we say, do not get into this covenant unadvisedly or rushingly. But we go into it after serious what? Thought. Praise the Lord. So to the married men, married women here, please keep your vow. Keep your vow. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 5 that if you do not keep your vow, the Lord will destroy the works of your hands. I have seen men and women that have cheated on their spouses and they have lived a destroyed kind of life thereafter. Every wealth they had accumulated started to dwindle away. We are talking about consecration. Be consecrated unto the Lord. Be set apart. And with God, everything is what? Possible. So if you have given your word, make sure you keep your word. Praise the Lord. Brothers and sisters, as we draw to the end, I've talked about a relationship with God. I've talked about intimacy with God. I have talked about complete surrender to God, choosing. But then, in Acts chapter 6, Acts chapter 6, 
When the men of God were doing wonders, miracles, and many miracles were being done in their time, there was kind of destruction. Let me read it for us quickly. Acts chapter 6, what does it say? In those days, so in those days when the number of disciples was increasing, the Hellenistic Jews among them complained against the Hebrew Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said, it would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to wait on tables. Brothers and sisters, choose seven men from whom you, from, from among you, who are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them and we will give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. Hallelujah. Distractions were coming their way. Confusion, quarrels, gossip and slander over food. My goodness, I don't know what it is with food. No wonder the Bible says man shall not do what? Live on bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Good ministry was being done. The work of God was being done. People were getting saved, and indeed the enemy now comes in form of food. Brothers and sisters, do not control, be controlled by food. Choose this day what will control you. Sometimes we are controlled by food. The Lord calls you to fast and you'll give all the excuses. I remember one day, my son came to me. We had declared a fast as a family. We were going through a trying time as a family. And so we said we need to fast. I was breastfeeding at that time. And with us breastfeeding, we all had to fast. So at around midday, my eight-year-old was nine at that time. She came and said, Mommy, I am dying. Can I drink something? I was like, but we are fasting. And for you, you're supposed to stop around two. But mommy, for you, you're not tempted. But for us, we are getting tempted. Mommy. And I told this young girl, no. And then the brother came and said, but you, mommy, you're strong. For even when there is KFC, you're not tempted. But for us, we are being tempted. Let us drink. Of course, I had to allow them to drink. Hallelujah. What did they say? Why did they say that? Because they had watched me fast. That even with KFC, I wasn't being tempted. Even with Javas, I wasn't being tempted. Even with Chikomando, I wasn't being tempted. Please don't be tempted over chips and chicken. Over Chikomando. How can you be tempted over Chikomando, really? Hmm? How can you be tempted? And sometimes when you're hungry and you're about to break the fast, that's when the temptations, that's when the enemy rages well. You remember in Matthew chapter 4 and Luke chapter 4, Jesus was close to the end and the enemy came and said, if you are the son of God, turn these stones into bread. What was Jesus' response? Man shall not live on bread alone. Brothers and sisters, we don't overcome the enemy with many words. We don't overcome the enemy with reasoning and theology. We overcome the enemy on the word of God and in prayer. The disciples did not allow to be distracted. We said, no, 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 no. They said, no, 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 no. We need to get men and women to take this responsibility and let us focus on prayer and the word. I thank God for what is happening at the cathedral. The prayer move at the cathedral. Hallelujah. That is the secret to revival. Brothers and sisters, you want to see revival in your home. The secret is prayer. Fathers who are here, you want to see your sons pray. The secret is you kneeling and praying. The man said, we are not going to be distracted. So a consecrated man or woman does not get distracted over trivial things like food. A consecrated man overcomes distractions. So look around you and what are those distractions? What is that that is shifting your attention from the Lord? Please avoid. And the second thing which the disciples did, they said, no, we are going to delegate. 
So in order for us to live a, a consecrated life, we need to delegate certain things. But never delegate your personal prayer time with God. Let the enemy take anything, but don't allow the enemy to touch your prayer life. Some of us, we start to pray and we doze in the middle. Repent and turn to the Lord. The enemy can touch anything. Don't allow him to touch your prayer life. The moment he lays his dirty hands on your prayer life, you are gone. The disciples were being distracted and they said, mm, no, 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 no. We need to delegate this responsibility and get men and women filled with the Holy Spirit to do it. Let's focus on prayer. Friends, choose to spend time in the presence of God. And then we also see, in order for us to live a consecrated life, in Romans chapter 12, we are told, offer yourselves to God. Offer yourself daily. It is a daily duty. Offer and surrender to God. And always remember, bad company corrupts good moral. Who are the people you hang out with? If you're hanging out with thieves, four thieves, who is the fifth thief? Yourself. If you're hanging around with womanizers, three womanizers, who is the fourth one? Bad company corrupts good moral. Tell me your friends, and I'll tell you your characters. Tell me your friends. So, friends, this evening the Lord is calling us to check our friends. Consecrated men have died to anything of this world, the flesh. And finally, brothers and sisters, the Lord is calling us to resolve to seek him. We don't just become great. We don't just become fruitful. But remember Daniel with the three Hebrew boys in captivity in Daniel chapter 1 and verse 8. The Bible tells us Daniel and his friends resolved. Please resolve to know no one else but God. Resolve not to be defiled by the things of this world. By focusing your eyes on Jesus. And let me tell you, the sky will not be the limit. May the Lord bless you. Amen. Shall we bow our heads and pray? Daniel and his friends resolved. Please resolve not to defile yourself. There are many temptations. There are many things that are coming your way, hindering you from pursuing God. This evening, the Lord is asking you to surrender them to him. I surrender all to you. Everything I give to you. Surrender, maybe friends, maybe conversation. I surrender all to you. Surrender, shall we please stand up on our feet? Everything as a sign of surrender. I give to you withholding nothing, withholding nothing, withholding nothing, withholding nothing. Surrender as a prayer this evening. Let it be a prayer this evening. Yeah, I surrender. surrender the distraction that have been coming our way in form of phones the distractions that have been coming our way in form of friends the distractions that have been coming our way in form of arguments in form of reasoning the distractions that have been coming our way in form of food we surrender Just 
all of us speak to the Lord. We shall slow down on the singing and just speak to the Lord. Just surrender to the Lord. Father, this evening we come to you because you desire a consecrated life. We come to you because you're calling us to be set apart. You're calling us to be holy. You know what is turning in the way in your life. Maybe it is your friends. Maybe it is the conversations. Surrender them to the Lord this evening. Maybe it is your friends at work. Maybe it is a wrong altar that has been erected at your home. And indeed you're being torn apart. You're asking whether to go or not to go. Surrender that to the Lord. Father, we surrender our friends. We surrender all distractions to you. We surrender our workplaces. We surrender our marriages. Maybe it is your marriage. Or maybe it is food. In Acts, it was food that was bringing problems. Just surrender to the Lord. Father, we surrender. You know what your children are struggling with today. You know what children are battling with today, oh God. So this evening, we surrender all their concerns to you. We surrender every anxiety to you. We surrender every worry. Father, to some of us, worry has taken over in our lives. To some of us, marriages have taken over. To some of us, it's children that have distracted us from you. To some of us, it's the pleasures of this world. It is the materialism, oh God, that we are pursuing. So this evening we surrender. This evening we give to you. We desire to be say yes, consecrated to you. We desire to be set apart. To know nothing but you alone. We give ourselves to you, oh God. And we say, Lord, we die to the flesh. We die to the distractions of this world. We die to the ple pressures in this world. We die to the things that have distracted us from you. We die to self-righteousness. We die to the works of the enemy this day. And we say, Lord, take over. Take over in our lives, O oh God. Fill us this day with your Holy Spirit and cause us to represent you, O oh God. Yes, my Lord. So you can use me. I give myself away. Give myself away so you can use me. Thank you, Father, for the 